Hello everyone and welcome back to the 119th episode of the Top 5 Weekly. Now if you're new here this is a series where I take a look at the most popular workshop creations on Steam, analyze each one of the creations, discover their features and test them out here in Stormux. But before we get started if you are enjoying my content don't forget to like and subscribe button and while you're watching let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So all said let's get straight into it and get started with this week's episode. And starting off the episode with the first creation, we have the CGW1 modem. This is a capable workbook that has a crane, some winches, two medium engines inside there, and a lot of other features. So let's go and spawn in and see how it works. And spawning in the next creation, this looks really cool. I like the use of some XML pieces here, like the spotlight, the windows, some pipes here at the back. The detailing is really cool. It looks like the hull is nice and rounded. Uh, beautiful colors and not too much detailing, but just enough to make it look really cool. I think you can see we've got different color paint blocks here. Uh, really cool, actually. So let's have a look at the back first. So it looks like we've got a winch here. Uh, that would obviously be for maybe towing some things or picking up some cargo or whatever it needs to be. This is obviously is a utility boat. So that is quite important that you could be able to tow things and move things around. Uh, we've got some tires along the side and then we go to the front where we've got a little bit of a porthole. We've got this big crane here in the front, which I'm guessing can rotate left and right and outwards and up and down. We'll check that later on. Uh, looks like a little ramp of some sort. Let's go and have a look at that. So, yep, a little ramp and that can go and open and close. Cool. We do have some rails here, so I'm thinking maybe you can get a container or something on here or something that would fit on those rails. Uh, what did we have in here? So just some ropes and things and then here, yep, same thing, ropes and things. Nothing, nothing, refueling, okay. And then we can make our way here. Okay, and that brings us to the bridge. Okay, so we'll check the bridge out in a few seconds. Let's go here, what's here? Let's go down here. We have a toilet, nice. What do we have down here? So a little bit of a crew area where you can go and sit and you've got that last little skylight there too. Cool. Uh, let's go and go upstairs. So we can should jump and press F, there we go. And now we're in the bridge, cool. So what controls do we have? We've got a little seat here and we've got a home. Um, electric systems, fuel pumps, engines, beacon, flares, oops. Let me get up here quickly. And we close that before I fall down again. Estimated range, fuel level, electricity, spotlight, tow light, nav lights, bridge lights. And then transfer helm controls to crane. Okay, so we can, tr can control the crane. So we're up and down. Okay. Uh, just up and down. That's all the controls that we have here at the moment. We also have up and down here. So that's for that piece. And then left and right. Okay, so we can rotate this. Quite quick, actually. Wow. Okay, cool. That's quite nice. We got winch up, winch down, mag all. Okay, pretty straightforward there. Let's go and turn that off. Again, you can see, oh, hello. Why are we moving forwards? Maybe I didn't, can I do that again? Okay, it seems to put the throttle on. So it remembers that we had obviously the W when we were moving the crane and then it puts us forwards on the throttle. Interesting. Okay, just be aware of that. Uh, what else do we have? So we got uh, throttle reverse, we got crane pitch, which is all the same control. That's why we were going forwards like that. Uh, steering. Okay, cool. So let's see how this thing works. What do we have here? Speed, engine RPS, and low radio. Cool. Okay, so let's go forwards now. Pretty decent speed. I like it. It's not going too quickly, but it's not going too steady, and it feels very kind of realistic, which is pretty cool. Like the hull. The hull shape is really cool. Can see that you can barely hear the engines but that's probably because we're we had headphones on if i'm correct yeah we do yeah you can hear those engines now nice okay speed 25 knots uh we also have what else do we have high torque gear okay so there's a little high torque gear i just can take it off also if we need to cool so just a really nice little simple creation i don't know what's going on with the crane controls and and everything let's put the throttle back down to zero oh we can see the throttle here so let's test that so we activate the crane we can move it up and then if we forget to bring it down again you can see how it's still controlling the throttle there so if we leave it up like that 
or even if we bring it down, I guess, like that, and then turn that off. We're now going in reverse. Uh huh. Okay, so that is um, that's something that's quite weird there, but cool. A uh, lovely little creation. I like it. I think this is, would make a cool little um, like career boat because it's so, it's so nice and beautiful and detailed. Really pretty cool. So let's, with that said, uh, let's go and move on to the next creation for the episode. And moving on to the next creation of the episode, we have the M2A6 Harrell main battle tank. This is a fictional modern MBT named after Ben Harrell. Seems like it's got a couple cool features like 50k top speed, a diesel electrical engine in there, there's space for a commander, a loader, a driver, and a few other cool things. So let's go and spawn it and see how it works. And spawning in the next creation, this looks really cool. I like the design of this paint scheme is pretty cool too you can see there's a little wheel here at the back guessing that's just to help with speed but yeah really cool i like the angled flare mounts that's pretty cool spotlights here in the front you can see the big turret there and we've got obviously got a little machine gun i'm guessing which would be on the top uh cool what is at the back of this creation okay so nothing really here at the back looks like these would where where the engines are and you can see some fans up there yeah uh, cool, so I'm guessing you can go up here just using the ladder. Okay, cool. So what do we have? We have a hatch and a commander seat. Okay. So, uh, yeah, loader and commander. Okay, and then we've just got the machine gun here. Uh, what's Okay, so we're going to hatch here, which is the driver's hatch. So we can jump inside there. We've got throttle, interior lights. Heaters, fans, spotlights. Okay, so fans, starter, get that on. Okay, so that means we can see things. And we've got some cameras at the front of the creation, as you can see just over there. So that's how we can actually see. Ish. Cool, okay. Now, is there a way for me to get out of here? Let's see. Oh, it's a little bit tight because of the, the turret is there. So let's see, can I grab that handle? Maybe try and pull myself out. Doesn't really look like it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the home key uh, and lock myself down there. And let's go to the commander. So commander, we've also got loader, which has launch left and right. I'm guessing flares. Uh, infrared. Cool. And then can we move the gun? Yes, we can. Okay, cool. So you can move the gun up, down, left, and right. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's go and see how well this thing actually drives. So jumping out of here, go. Back to driver's seat and back to driver. Roll's already on. We should be good to go. Maybe brakes off. And let's try. There we go. Cool. Pretty straightforward. Looks like it's um, doing its gears by itself. Let's try and do some off-road here. Can't really hear it that well because I think I think the, the driver's got maybe headphones on. Possibly, I can't really see myself. Yeah, he's got headphones on. Okay. So yeah, it looks like it's driving pretty well. Top speed around 50, okay. So 40, I'm guessing this is in kilometers per an hour. And then we also got low gear mode. That, that is, that's not really even moving. Oh, let's try again. Okay, there we go. I think I pressed the brakes instead of low gear, that's why. Okay, so that's just low gear mode. So if you're doing any obstacles or anything, that's quite useful to have. Take it off low gear, and then you can see we can really move. Cool creation. I don't know if this was built for my challenge. I, could, I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see for my challenge, see if this one pops up there. Uh, really cool. I like it. Got a good uh, design to it. Cool. Let's go ahead. Let's move on to the next creation for the episode. And moving on to the next creation, we have the BRS Pikta. This is a, a Tomless killing machine, which is quite interesting. Um, apparently, this thing likes to hunt down creations and uh, players in the game, along with trees. So this is quite interesting. Uh, let's go and spawn in and let's see how it works. And spawning in the next creation, yeah, you can see this thing is, is floating here in front of us. Um, so apparently you need a remote controller to turn it 
either from green mode to red mode. So red mode is the attack mode in theory, I'm guessing. And then green mode is like a safe mode where it will just kind of like hover around you. Now I'm guessing the creator is using a combination of sensors and radars and sign of here for it to kind of decide where you are in relevance to it. Uh, yeah, you can see that it looks like there's some radars on that side there. And then I'm guessing it just attacks the next target that it can find here, which is quite interesting. Um, seems like it's floating up in the air, so maybe, yeah, so definitely using some duck fans or something like that. Um, okay, will it follow me? No, okay. So remote controller on channel zero and then activate it. Oh, hello. And it just went straight after me, okay. So that is, this is green mode, which means it's not going to attack me. What if I was to walk over here by some of the trees? Will it go and try and attack some of these trees? Okay, so it's now coming directly for me. Okay, so green mode. That's green mode. Let's do... So it's trying to attack me. No, let's try and run in the trees. So you can see it's literally trying to follow me and attack me. So if we had damage on, obviously I'll be getting damaged by that. Um, I don't see how it likes... I don't know how it likes trees because... Okay, you can see it is trying to go for the trees, but it's, it's going for me more than anything. Very interesting. I'm trying to avoid it and dodge it here. I guess you could play some cool games with this. Um... I'm guessing the creator maybe will be doing something or maybe rescue based or themed with this possibly in the future. I I, I could be wrong. Uh, there's not much information about this creation. Let me just put this back to green here. Uh, doesn't seem like there is options to turn it off either. Just the one which is to activate it on and off. Um, but yeah, interesting. Interesting creation. Definitely go, go check this out. Have a little play with it. Um, don't think we've really seen anything similar to this. I think we've seen a few different types of bots before, but not really an autonomous killing machine one. Um, so a very interesting design. Definitely go check it out. Let's go ahead and let's move on to the next one for the episode. And moving on to the next creation, we have the Saunders Row SR N6 Winchester class hovercraft. Definitely a nice looking hovercraft and definitely a realistic one at the same time. This one used to do uh, ferries across the Isle of Wight and also the English Channel. That's pretty cool. Uh, specifications, a top speed around 60 plus knots, 26 passengers, and a range of about 350 kilometers. It's also Stormlink compatible, which is really pretty something cool. Uh, let's go and spawn it and see how it works. And moving on to the next creation. This looks really cool. I like the design of this hovercraft. You can see we've got the skirt, which I'm guessing moves up and down. I'm only guessing that considering, yeah, it looks like it does because it's got obviously these little spare pieces here. Uh, beautiful designed. Definitely using a couple of XML edited pieces here and there, but really nice looking design to this. Really pretty cool. Back here we've got our big control services, some nice supports for the engine stuff. I'm guessing that's a window piece. Very cool looking at the back. Okay, so let's get inside this. Let's see if we can get this moving. So we've got a access ramp that we can guess, yeah, jump up on and close off. And then we've got a navigator, a pilot seat, and then all the seating we could ever want, I guess. Nice. Okay, now this is Stormlink compatible, which is pretty cool. Uh, okay, I think we need to get everything started before we do anything. So let's get electronics and everything on. Engine on. Okay, and that should get everything ready. We've got trim up and down, prop sticky, engine throttle, high or low. Uh, looks like a radio some lights and things okay we also got the ac inverter which if i'm correct is for power here so we can do all the radar stuff and that should go and turn on i think in a few seconds maybe we need some more power on the inverter let's just have a look here there we go and then that should be turning on cool and give it a few seconds there we go cool so a little radar there if you need it which is cool for navigator uh, let's go back here. So we can now switch this into high. Okay, so that should get everything turned on. Uh, let's close our front little hatch. What do we have here? Oh, a little, little map light. Probably need our... I've got an AC inverter on. 
is that maybe oh it's on it's just very low in light okay that's cool uh let's close that off nice okay let's use the modular engine stuff there it looks like a little support it's pretty cool okay so we should be good to go now if i'm correct we have puff ports two and three that we can do and you can see there have a look at that that's pretty cool we can do the other side too a radio clear obstacles six so that just lifts it up in the front i'm guessing just holds it there for a few seconds you can kind of get a glimpse inside the creation there okay cool uh let's go and what do we have left and right rudders up and down prop pitch and then uh okay we can wsad okay cool so let's go forwards a bit okay there we go and then we can steer I can go here. Don't know how well this is designed to be on land, but we're gonna try our best here. See if I can get it down to the dock. This is gonna be quite interesting though. And we should be able to go forwards now. Left, forwards, left. There we go. Okay. And there we are. Now we're in the water. Yeah, much easier to control in the water. So much easier to control. Very cool. Now we can switch it to sticky, which means that we don't have to constantly hold up and down. And that way we should just move forwards. And there we go. So now we can just move ahead and we should be getting around 60 knots. I'm guessing it will pick up its speed in a few seconds. That's very cool. And then you can move left and right if you want to. Yeah, look how much easier it's moving now in the water. Very cool. And then you can use also left and right if you want to just use the control surfaces on the back. Very nice. Lovely creation. A little bit tricky as I said to do it on land, maybe it's just me. Um, but once you get on the water, now oh, that's really cool and you can see the skirts moving all around the place there. Very, very nice. But I think, I think hovercrafts in, in any case were meant to be very hard to control on land. Or just in general actually. But anyway, a very cool creation. Definitely one you guys can go play around. This is, I think, a really cool idea for uh, Stormlink to go around the little islands using a hovercraft. Really, really cool idea. And you can see speed speed. Nice. Cool. Lovely creation. Let's go and move on to the next one for the episode. And moving on to the last creation of the episode, we have ZE Dune Buggy. Now, this is a really nice looking little dune buggy and probably the smallest one that we've seen on the workshop in terms of the dune buggies. Um, Top speed around 195, so 120 kilometers per an hour. Really good acceleration, apparently, also, and just looks really cool. So, WSAD controls too. So, let's spawn and see how it works. And spawning in the buggy, man, this looks really nice. I like the use of the XML pipes. Very, very nice there. Pretty low profile, too, as you can see. Looks like the creator's just using the smallest pieces they can for it. Little modular engine here at the back. Very straightforward, little modular engine, little radiator on it. Nice. Guessing this is the exhaust, because he's got a catalytic converter on there. Yeah, looks like it. Okay. Cool. Very nice. Let's go and jump in it. So, one passenger seat. Some equipment. Speed, fuel, ignition, lights, parking brake, winch up and down. Okay, so we've got a little winch in the front, just in case. That's really cool. Very nicely done. I uh, also got an option to unflip. Okay, that's quite interesting. So what does that actually do? So left and right. Oh, okay. So it just moves. Yeah, it just moves the creation, as you can see. That's pretty cool. I'm very smart of him to think of that. Uh, let's go and check how this works. So, ooh, very clean. Very quick too. Wow. Oh, that's very nice. I like the rear wheels are a little bit bigger than the front ones. This thing handles very well. Now we just need a desert map to use this on. <laughs> um, wow, really cool. I'm going to try and flip myself because I want to see... I want to see how this unflipping thing works. Let's see if I can flip myself here. There we go. Okay. So we've just flipped ourselves. 
for example. Let's turn the engine off. Uh, and then to unflip, we'll just use left and right. Very easy, very smart. Very, very smart to do that. And very cool. It's a lovely little creation. Uh, definitely a nice, lovely little one you can have a lot of fun with. Use this in a race. I'm guessing this will probably do better than maybe some sports cars that we have in Stormworks. Seems just so agile, so light on the ground. I wonder if he's got any fins or anything to to keep it level. Um, possibly. Or could just be really well balanced. But man, that's cool. I love the use of the modular engines inside this. This definitely does complete the, the look of the vehicle. And it seems like it's got a ton of very, very fuel efficient. Kind of gotten stuck in the trees a bit. Uh, very fuel efficient too. As you can see, the fuel is hardly ever going down. So it's really done a good job optimizing that modular engine. Yeah, sounds like it. So guys, I think that will probably be a great place to end this episode off with. As always, if you're new here, you can check out any of these creations. I do leave them linked in the video description. If you want to go have some play with them or if you just want to go and say hi to the creators, definitely go and check them out and uh, see what you think about them here in Stormworks. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you don't want to see my future content, hit that little bell icon. And until next week, we will see you then.